uh, based on statements that she made um, and, and, and hoping to, to really get some clarification. Um, the, the one statement that you made in your presentation was that uh, Annie says, since we're using that name, and Woodmont had intervened in this case. And in fact, Mr. Buzak made a similar statement a moment ago. And isn't it true that, that they were not in, allowed to intervene in the case, either one of them? They tried, the town opposed it, and the judge said, no, they're not interveners. Am I correct that, on that? That is correct. And I okay. corrected, and I appreciate your correction. Um, and then next, Ms. Uh, McManus, you made a statement that, to the effect that um, in a builder's remedy case, uh, no one ever makes out uh, better than the demands that the builder wants. And I just wanted to, uh, is that, is that accurate or not? No, it's and, not and that it's not nobody ever, question. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's not that whatever the builder wants is always what they get. That, that was not my statement. My, my statement is that builders remedy litigation, successful ones, uh, this is not a quote, but what I essentially said was builder, successful builders remedy litigations result in developments that are bigger, more intense, and perhaps a different use than what the municipality had envisioned for the site. Okay. So okay. the developer might want, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Beth, finish As, up. You know, maybe the site, again, uh, sort of a um, extreme example to illustrate a point, a site might be zoned for say two units an acre. If a developer, proceeds with the builder's remedy and asks for 100 units an acre, I think it's unlikely they're going to be successful to get 100 units an acre, but I can tell you it's going to be more than two units an acre. Okay. And That's for instance, Cranford well, developed, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Cosgrove, if I may just Go supplement ahead, what Beth had said. Uh, the other aspect of a builder's remedy lawsuit is that essentially the burden of proof shifts uh, that is, once the develop, once a builder's remedy lawsuit is filed, it's the burden shifts to the township or the municipality to persuade the court that this site uh, and the proposal for this site is unsuitable for that uh, for that site. Uh, in other words, the we then have the burden of going forward as opposed to the developer having a burden typically to prove that their site is indeed a good site for this. It's assumed that the site, when the developer comes in in the builder's remedy lawsuit is a good site. It's up to us to demonstrate that it's environmentally inappropriate. It's got other constraints on it and so forth. So the dynamic shifts in terms of litigation activity. Thank you. And then Ms. McManus, for instance, in the in the Cranford development versus Cranford case, the court reduced the uh, the number of units from 419 to 360, correct? The I don't know that court. case. I don't know that case specifically. Okay. Now, now the last thing, last question I have is actually uh, might require a tiny bit of math, okay? Um, because uh, the former mayor brought up uh, uh, a a comment about there being no housing project in the Short Hills train station area. Ms. Canfield corrected that, which was accurate. What is the density um, of, the, of the Woodland project, the Silverman project? It's over 40 units an acre, isn't it, the density? Uh, I don't know specifically. I can, uh, if you, I can actually run the math for you. It is, let's see. 62, 62. plus 10,000 square feet of, of office space. So it is 62 an acre, 62 units on 1.5 uh, acres. 1.5 acres. So it's about 40 units an acre of residential okay. development plus the 10,000 square feet of medical office. Okay. And that was pushed through why uh, Diane Egla was the mayor, correct? You know, I wasn't involved at that time, so I, okay. I really can't I don't think I should be commenting on who was in place because I, I really don't have that history. Okay. I agree and I appreciate that. I think we would, let's keep this focused on the, the application Wait, hand, not on. Uh, sorry, I just have pointing. to take twice it's been brought up, the Silverman. What I said, Ms. Canfield and Mr. Cosgrove, there's no overlay zone in the ordinance for those two areas. Okay, because the, the no, damage has already been done, right? 
Okay. Uh, that's all I have, folks. Thank you very much. I